Hello and welcome to the latest video in the Antenna Lab series. If you've been watching the channel already, you'll have already seen three or four Antenna Lab videos talking about the effect that different situations have on FPV antennas and had some amazing feedback on those videos that I've been able to do with Greg at Menace RC. So a very big thank you again to Greg at Menace RC that's been involved in the creation of this latest video. And in this latest Antenna Lab video, what we're going to do is test whether or not there's a detrimental effect if you add a 45 or 90 degree adapter or an extension cable onto your antenna, whether it's on your glasses or on the craft itself. And while we're at it, let's have a look at bend radiuses. A lot of people don't like to bend the coax on an antenna. And what does it do? How far does it bend before you start to get problems? So let's have a look at those two things. So the first test we'll look at is going to test what the effect of using adapters are with FPV antennas. Now this is going to be a test across 5600 to 6000 megahertz or 5.6 to 6 gig and the test cable is connected uh, and to zero out to make sure that then when we introduce any of the adapters we can see what the loss is in decibels. And what Greg's going to do is he's going to install a 45 degree, a 90 degree adapter and a couple of extension cables. Now the first one that's plugged in here is a 45 degree adapter and the 45 degree adapter is giving a little bit of a loss. It's giving a 0 0.67 dB loss at about 5.8 gigahertz, which is right in the middle of the band. And that's not bad. You could live with that. Interestingly, when you put a 90 degree adapter in the same situation, the drop is an awful lot worse. It's about 2.16 decibels at about 5.7 gigahertz. And talking to Greg, he's not exactly sure why that is, but it might be the fact that essentially the right angle inside the 90 degree adapter is acting like a very, very sharp radius on the cable. And we'll look at that in a minute. So at the, the moment, if you're going to have a choice between using a 45 degree or a 90 degree adapter from these results, then 45 degrees is going to give you a better situation. Last couple of things then, he's popped on a five centimeter length of RG316 extension coax, and that gave a significant loss. There was a 3.85 dB loss at 5.82 gigahertz. Now, the interesting thing with this is RG316 extension coax is really designed, I think, more for Wi-Fi rather than FPV. But an awful lot of the things you see on eBay is made out of RG316. So make sure that anything you're using or buying in the kit that you're flying with isn't made of RG316. And if you're not sure, I would probably get rid of it to replace it with the next thing we're going to have a look at which is RG402. Now, this is the stuff that Menish use for their own extension leads, and this is rated for the kind of frequencies that you're going to use in FPV. So with a 5 centimeter RG402 extension, it lost 1.79 dB at about 5.89 gigahertz. So the conclusion for this is that actually putting extensions onto antennas does make an appreciable difference. Some of that is probably going to be coming from the internals of the actual adapters themselves. Some of it is going to be coming from the physical connections that you have to make between the two. And I found myself that 90 degree adapters tend to have lots of different varying qualities. And some 90 degree adapters I've had from eBay have been absolutely shocking, give me really bad results. And I've just assumed that that was because they were badly made. But I'm guessing the fact that the 90 degree adapters loss of 2.16 dB is pretty standard. Uh, Greg had a whole bag of them and he put, went through quite a few because he was surprised at how bad that loss was. But from now on, I'm going to try and stay away after looking at this from 90 degree adapters. And I'm also going to make sure that every extension cable that I use is RG402 coax. So the next test then is going to be having a look at bend radiuses. Now, one of my friends is particularly passionate about making sure that you never ever bend the coax in an FPV cable. So again, similar setup. What we've done here is we've put the cable onto the rig. Uh, Greg has zeroed it out when the cable is at the straight position, and then he's gone through and done a number of tests. 
Now, the specified minimum radius for the cable that Greg has here is a minimum bend radius of 6.35 millimeters. Now, this is very much a real rule of thumb. If you bend the coax around your thumb, assuming you don't have really dinky hands, then that's going to be over the minimum bend radius. And interestingly, so long as you're above the minimum bend radius as specified in the coax that you have, there is no appreciable difference. Greg bent it to 90 degrees with that radius of 6.35 millimeters and couldn't read any change in the performance of the cable. So the next two things to do then, of course, was to bend the cable at 90 degrees around a much tighter radius of three millimeters, which is half the radius well under half the radius of the minimum bend radius specified in the specs. And interestingly, when that happened, a loss of 0.37 dB was measured at 5.9 gigahertz. So the next thing to do then is to get the pliers out and give it a really, really, really tight radius here, and it's gonna fold back on itself. And in this instance, the loss was pretty constant, actually. It was about 0.3 dB uh, loss measured at 5904 gigahertz. So long as you are not going over the minimum bend radius specified in the specs. And for me, I would always use the rule of thumb. If it's a 6.35 millimeter radius, that gives you a kind of a 13 millimeter diameter circle that you want to use. Uh, your standard thumb, in fact, I'll measure mine while I'm doing this here, is about 22, 23 millimeters across. If you bend it around your thumb, you should have no appreciable impact on the antenna at all. Bending it tighter than that or putting in really sharp radiuses under the minimum specified bend radius, you're going to be started losing. And it seems to be pretty constant about the 0.3, 0.4 dB mark. And that's not particularly terrible. And I guess that's because the dielectric and the insulation inside the cable is being crushed. But just make sure that you're bending the cable gently around something like your thumb and you should be fine. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that like these kind of videos. Anything else you want testing, please pop it down below. And please make sure you're subscribed and have the bell notification icon on because Greg has very kindly agreed to continue making these videos as long as there's interest. And there's another couple of great things that we need to test that are common misconceptions. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.